We're joined on the pregame program now with the head football coach and athletic director at Buffalo State, Coach Jerry Boys. Coach, this is your second stint as head coach in Buffalo, and you're ending your seventh season in that stint, coming off a very impressive 8-3 and three season. Is it safe to say expectations on campus haven't been this high since you started coaching again? Well, I'd like to hope so, David. Um, a lot of parallels with... When I, during my first go here as, as a head coach back starting in 1986 to when I came back in 2009. And, uh, and I say the parallels are with the growth of, of the program and the successes that we, we had. So um, kind of anxious to see if, if we're on course, you might say, Dave. <laughs> Coach, the Empire 8 is always a tough conference, especially with St. John Fisher in there, a team Otterbein knows very well from playing them the past two years in the season opener. Is the goal heading into this year to take the league title? Well, I would say that's probably one of those unspoken goals, <laughs> Dave. Um, so one thing in, in any any sports, uh, but particularly in football, if you – kind of look at look ahead to to the big goal without taking care of the the little details on the way to and what it takes to attain that goal then you'll never reach it so it's a, a game by game it's a, a process of where the ultimate goal is really in the word success and if you reach those things then then the wins uh, kind of just happen Dave. We're talking with head football coach at Buffalo State, Coach Jerry Boys. Coach, you turn a lot, return a lot of starters this year on your team. In your opinion, what's the strongest unit on this Bengals bunch? Well, I hope it's on the defensive side, Dave. We have, um, you know, a lot of you know, a lot of men uh, returning, but they're returning with a lot of playing experience, and experience means a great deal uh, in this sport. Um, you know, you, you've got to go through the young players have got to go through the stages of making mistakes. Uh, that's the only way they really learn. Uh, so when you have upperclassmen uh, coming back after playing a year or two of those things, you, you like to think that uh, the experience is there and, and you uh, that does does kind of uh, cause you to uh, rise, raise those expectations, you might say, Dave. You talk about that experience on the defensive side of the ball. One of those players, outside linebacker Marquise Artis, not only the Empire 8's defensive player of the year last season, but was named to the preseason All-American team. Coach, you get to see him go just about every day. Just how good of a player is he? Well, I'm biased a little bit on that, Dave, but I think he's a pretty good football player. <laughs> uh, very athletic young man that, um, uh, you know, is just one of those kids that, Sometimes, uh, you know, we, we talk a lot. You hear coaches talk about they have a nose for the ball and have great sense of, of football. Uh, and that's our job just to help them with that, with technique and, and uh, things of that nature. So he has all the skill set, uh, Dave, and uh, it's nice to see him being recognized for that. You talked about all the talent on the defensive side of the ball, but let's look at the offensive side, Coach, and you're very experienced there as well. How would you grade your offense heading into the first game of the season? Well, I'm anxious to see, Dave, tell you the truth. Um, one of the, the – the, uh, we had to replace some people. Uh, Mike uh, Doherty and Ryan Carney, who were very, very good receivers, uh, each had over 1,000 yards in receiving last year and a tailback. Richard Pete, who had over 1,000 yards rushing last year. So I guess when you total that all up, it's about 3,500 yards of total offense lost through graduation. Um, so new faces. Um, but what I, I'm, I'm kind of hoping, Dave, the old uh, things that I always used to say, that, that once you, the success gets there, uh, the names and faces change, but the success remains. So it's it's next man in, you might say, Dave. And uh, let's see if they kind of step up to the challenge and to the platter of uh, the high expectations we have of them. Exactly. Coach, I'm sure you've spent a lot of time scouting Otterbein in the weeks leading up to this first game. What have you noticed that the Cardinals do really well that might give your team some difficulties? Well, I, I think the first thing is, is Otterbein doesn't beat Otterbein. Uh, they... Uh, they don't make mistakes. 
Uh, I think they're, they've been very sound. Uh, we're anxious to see because I, in the last couple of years, they, they've been all different offensively. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the, the coaches certainly assess, you know, what are the strengths of their, their players and, and uh, adjust accordingly. Um, but I just see a very, very sound uh, offense, defense, special teams where, uh, you know, you've got to go in there and be the better team that day or otherwise you're going to come out on the short end of the stick. Coach, thank you so much for taking some time and joining us in our pregame broadcast. We hope you enjoy your stay here in central Ohio, and best of luck to you and your team the rest of the way. Well, Dave, I, I appreciate your reaching out and, and being persistent <laughs> in doing so. I'm always uh, glad to be uh, be a part of uh, you know the college team and, and so happy for guys like yourself and, and the program we have that uh, you know does so much for your campus. So thanks so much.